How much do you love God? It goes without saying that the history of the world is overwhelmingly very dark. It is a history filled with injustice, oppression, and slaughter, as well as natural catastrophes such as famine, disease, and death. However, above all these things, the greatest force of destruction the world has ever known has come from the immorality of mankind. Among those who are the most remembered from the past are those who possess great power and wealth, and those who made an impact on the world by ideas they embraced and spread about. Among the latter, sometimes you find even the poorest of the poor. Those who gained recognition by achieving greatness through physical force are often remembered more for their ruthlessness and destructive mannerisms as for anything else. It should be realized, however, that the infamous of times past who are remembered were often no more evil than the multitudes of common people who were at least as wicked, but who as individuals were virtually unknown in their time and then forgotten to history. Many of the forgotten merely were so because they had not the power to accomplish great deeds. Given the power and opportunity, some likely would have become more infamous than others who history remembers, but rightly detest. In judgment, therefore, does God judge the man more harshly whose evil affected more lives, or the lesser man who would have done even far greater evil had he been given the means and opportunity? Seeing then that the poor may be just as evil in heart, or even more so than his evil exalted brother, where is justice? Is the man who robs a convenience store for a few bucks less evil than the crooked financier who bilks investors out of millions of dollars? Or is the biggest difference often in abilities and opportunities rather than in wickedness of the heart? God is the judge. To begin with, we are not all born equal. Some are born into wealth, but many, many more into poverty. We are born in different places, of different races and nationalities, different genders with different physical attributes, abilities, or disabilities, with varying degrees of intellect, and so on. Also to be considered is the fact that people have been born at different times over periods of thousands of years. Take heed not to judge too harshly those in whose time or place you were not born. It may seem unfair as to why things are so in the world, but there is a purpose and all things will be revealed and resolved in due time. Today a great deal of focus is placed on equality and the need for equity to play a role in bringing about some form of social justice. However, none of the ideas set out are new. They are merely putrid leftovers from the past put in the fridge long ago. Today they have been brought back out and reheated to serve an ignorant society that has no taste or understanding of things. Every attempt made in the past to implement the tenets of Marxist ideas of equality have only resulted in greater inequality. They have created a larger gulf between the rich and the poor, with fewer at the top and more at the bottom. If by sameness one means equality, it is impossible to achieve. It is unavoidable that in any imagined structure of society, some individuals will always end up being more equal than others. You can be sure that it will always be those who champion equality who will be the ones at the top being more equal. Among those who have invested interest, who are demanding equality for minorities, equality for women, equality in wealth, equality for any and every lifestyle, orientation, or disorientation, where does it end? The truth be told, all people should indeed be treated fairly and justly, but not necessarily equally. Why? Because not all people are equal. If all people were equal, there would be no reason to have applications or to be subject to job interviews. All would be equally qualified or disqualified. Anyone can be your surgeon. Discrimination made perfect is a good thing. The Origin of Social Justice, so-called The first account given of the original social justice warrior is not the story of Karl Marx, or another man, but Lucifer. Although Lucifer was among the highest of God's created beings, he was discontent with being lower than God. He accused God of being an unjust and selfish slave master, 
Lucifer desired equity and reparations for his being created and put in a place of servitude. Heaven is a really, really big place, and the top job infinitely above and beyond Lucifer's abilities and pay grade. Nevertheless, being filled with jealousy, Lucifer led a rebellion in heaven to overthrow God. His message to the other angels was one calling for social justice and equality. And so here we are. But how do we really know this is what Satan did? Because you can always tell what Satan does by observing what his children do. Because we believe one man should have no right to own another, we do not condone slavery. However, God does own everyone and he has the right to take slaves because he created everyone. Nonetheless, he does not force anyone to be his slave. One must desire it and choose it. And God sent his beloved son to pour out his own blood to make it possible. How many masters would do that for their servants? My prayer to God is, make me a slave. Happy is the man that serves the Lord. It is of all things most to be desired. Besides, like it or not, you are going to serve somebody. It may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're going to serve somebody. An act of God. The world is a theater. God said, let there be light. And God saw the light and said it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Lucifer and his angels were cast out of heaven and Lucifer was called Satan, which means adversary. However, Lucifer had succeeded in creating a great controversy over how the order of things should be. God, willing to reveal the truth for the order of things, proposed to allow evil to prosper for a time and to bring forth its fruit to prove itself, but not in heaven in the presence of his holiness. Therefore God prepared a place for Satan and his angels and condemned them to it. There they could practice their evil works. And so it is those whom God would destroy are separated and allowed to have things their way. Being it was the will of God to make manifest his righteousness, for which he had now been called into question by his own creation, a temporal theater was created. The world became a stage. And just as most productions have heroes and villains with different parts involving many different characters being played by various actors, so it is in reality. And whereas in a production there is inequality, for in every act there are leading roles, supporting roles, and lesser characters, so also our world contains every character type necessary for fulfillment of all roles. It would be absurd to demand that every character in every production must be equal in all ways and all things. That would hardly work in a play, and how much less so in the real world. There is, however, a huge difference between God's theater and the fake productions of entertainment. Indeed, in reality, the whole world is a stage, and life is a dressing room for eternity. Everyone born is given a role, some small, some great. Every role fulfills a purpose. Unlike pretenders who are given their parts to rehearse and their lines to memorize, God has endowed us with free will. God has written the plot of the story, but each of us are given choices as to decide how we will play our part and to choose whose side we will be on. We hardly memorize all of our lines, and we each create our own character as we go. This brings us back to the beginning. Are you rich or poor, male or female, black, white, or another color? We could go on and on with this. However, there are too many differences among us to cite. But the truth be told, ultimately none of it matters. Why? Because we will all be judged by one thing, and one thing only. How much do you love God? Love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is keeping the commandments of God. For God is love. Seeing then, we will not be judged by any worldly measurement of differences, but by our love or lack thereof, worldly differences are rendered irrelevant in regards to eternal judgment. For many renowned who are now first will be last, and the last will be first. Many in the present world who have been given great power in leading roles, who chose to play a vile character speaking perverted lines, shall be cast down, while those whose lives may have seemed inconsequential 
but who love greatly, shall be exalted. Indeed, all are equal in that we all have a heart and a soul, and we are all required to give all of our heart and all of our soul to the Lord. Hold to fairness and righteous judgment, but the equality of this world means inequality. A focus on equality where all things are not equal merely breeds hatred, jealousy, divisions, and every other evil. Everyone's role is immensely important. More important still is how you perform your role. Don't envy the role of others or the place given to another. That was Lucifer's folly, who imagined in his heart to be like the Most High. We are not God's equal. He is above us, but we can be like him if we love him. It is written, The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. Matthew 10, 24 and 25. And again, But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 John 3, 2.